Hello, my name is Jim Shramsky and I'm with Binsfeld Engineering. We manufacture transmitters for rotating sensors. I'll now demonstrate how to install and set up the Torque Track Revolution system. The system has four independent 4 to 20 milliamp output signals for torque, power, speed of rotation, and direction of rotation. Let's get started. The Torque Track Revolution is designed for continuous torque and power monitoring and comprised of three main components. The rotating coil collar assembly, the stationary power coil, and the master control unit. The rotating collar assembly is machined to exactly fit the shaft and carries the transmitter module that is wired to the strain gauge. The power coil is fastened to the mounting block on the master control unit and simultaneously sends power to and receives data from the rotating assembly via an inductive link. The master control unit, or MCU, contains the connections for power input and the 4 to 20 milliamp output signals, as well as the control switches for configuring the torque and power outputs. The first step in the installation process is assembly of the rotating collar on the shaft. This assumes, of course, that I've already installed the strain gauge. You can refer to our other instructional videos on strain gauge installation for this step. Take the two halves and position them around the shaft. Carefully align the connectors on either end and firmly press them together. Take care not to pinch the strain gauge wires coming from the transmitter pocket. There's a little channel here in the collar for the wires. Next, take the 5 16 bolts that come with the system and insert them from opposite directions into the collar. And then, take the washers and nut that come along with the system and secure them such that when the two halves are fastened snugly there's a hundred thousandths gap between the two halves of the collar. Okay, and I'm just going to get these nuts finger tight on the collar. And then I'm going to use a 5 8 and 11 16 sockets to tighten the halves of the collars. Now, you want to alternate between the two halves so that they are tightened evenly. I want to move this up into position like so and then secure it in place. You want the collar to be tight but not so tight that damage occurs to the connectors or that the circuit boards are impinging on each other. I'll check this side one more time. Check my gap. That looks very good. Now on to the next step. As you can see, I've already completed the next step in the installation, which is mounting of the master control unit to the customer supplied bracket. The flange on the back of the enclosure has four mounting holes 
for up to quarter inch screws. I've also attached one half of the power coil to the master control unit to aid in alignment of the master control unit to the rotating collar. The back side surface of the rotating collar and the mounting block on the master control unit should be in alignment with each other and there should be approximately 3 eighths of an inch gap between the stationary coil and the rotating coil on the rotating collar assembly. I will now complete the installation of the remaining half of the power coil with the button head cap screws and washers provided and using an eighth inch Allen wrench. In order to obtain the correct alignment between the rotating collar and the stationary power coil, you may have to loosen the rotating collar and adjust its position on the shaft. Installation is complete. I will now demonstrate how to properly set the controls for the torque and power output signals within the master control unit. I will now connect power and verify basic operation of the system. The torque track revolution accepts either a 12 volt DC or 110 or 220 VAC power supply. Typically, in a permanent installation, the power is routed in shielded cable up through the knockouts provided in the bottom of the enclosure. For demonstration purposes, I will simply connect the power directly through the box opening using this green 3-pin connector provided with the system. And I will engage the power switch. The lights will blink in unison as the system powers up and establishes the inductive link. Once established, the main status indicator will remain lit on solid, indicating proper power and data transmission between the rotating and stationary units. The LED on the pre-wired star bridge should also be lit, indicating proper gauge power supply from the revolution transmitter. I'll now power down the system and trim the gauge lead wires and solder them to the strain gauge. I've soldered the lead wires to the strain gauge and powered the system back up. I've also connected a meter to the torque output terminals 1 and 2 on the black output connector. With no load on the shaft and the measurement of torque in either direction of shaft rotation, you want to set the torque output such that 12.00 milliamps corresponds to zero torque load on the shaft, with 4 milliamps indicating full-scale torque in the negative direction and 20 milliamps indicating full-scale torque in the positive direction. As you can see, there's an initial offset of 0 0.23 milliamps present in the strain gauge. This is typical. To adjust the output to 12 milliamps, you slide the calibration switch to enable, and then use the offset push buttons located here to increase or decrease the signal as needed. I'm going to hold down the offset decrement button and I've overshot slightly and I will push the increment push button a few times to bring that up to 12.00 milliamps. I'll now slide the switch to save to lock in that setting. I'll now review a few of the advanced controls within the master control unit. These two banks of dip switches are for configuring the torque and power outputs. There's also a series of rotary switches located here for scaling the power output signal. For more information, refer to our product manual. The torque output signal is now ready to be wired to your data acquisition or process control system. This concludes our presentation. Thanks for your time.